Welcome back to another edition of TEC Tube. Today we're going to explain how to read utility bills, both gas and electric, residential and commercial. So we'll go through all four of those examples and explain to you what's on the bill. The idea is going to be that when you're doing energy calculations for furnaces, boilers, chillers, whatever, you have some idea what these numbers mean and you can explain to people how the new improvements you're going to make to their building or home are going to save them energy. If you don't know how much energy they're using now, you have no chance of really explaining how much energy can be saved. So let's take a look at some of these. Uh, so I downloaded my most recent gas and electric bills uh, and blocked out my personal info because I don't trust you guys at all whatsoever. Uh, but I downloaded these and they have them on my computer. People get them in the mail typically. They can also download, most utilities will let you download at least 13 months of bills, uh, sometimes even more. So if you're trying to help somebody figure out how much energy they're gonna save, um, you can go on their, they can go on their account and download the bills and give them to you. So in my case, I have Combat Electric here in Illinois. This is my most recent bill. Normal stuff on here, your account number, name, all that kind of stuff, how much money you owe and when it's due. Normal bill stuff. Some items of interest. Uh, most utilities will give you a graph showing how much energy you're using each month. And then this is my final month here in August. I like to look back and see the prior August. I used 1,014 kWh, this time 845 kWh. kWh is kilowatt hours. Kilowatt hours are how many kilowatts you use multiplied by uh, how many hours you've used them for. So it's a unit of energy, whereas kilowatts is a unit of power. Your bill will show you both, uh, especially when we get to uh, commercial bills. KW and KWH both become very important in how much you're gonna spend. So you got that kind of information on here, how much KWH you're, gonna, you're using. Uh, in my case, my utility also gives me a breakdown on how much I'm using per day this year versus last year and the temperature this year versus last year, right? Um, and last month. So that kind of becomes useful info. Most utility bills, especially here in the Midwest and definitely here in Illinois are deregulated meaning that you do not have to get your electricity from the same people that provide you your electricity. So I have to use ComEd as my electricity delivering company, but I don't have to get my power from them. I can choose whomever I want to provide the power. They will just happen to provide it over ComEd power lines. And in my case, I get one bill from ComEd that shows how much energy ComEd delivered and how much energy I bought from my supplier. And it's all paid on one single bill. If somebody has ComEd for both, you may want to look at that because ComEd is typically not the least expensive because they're just buying it on the open market as well. So in any case, I have AEP as my energy supplier and ComEd as my delivery company. And you can see my bill, 66 bucks went to AEP, 47 went to ComEd. By the way, 127 bucks is a pretty low bill. Uh, I have a really awesome HVAC system. So if you need to know about that, we can have other videos on how to save energy with the actual equipment. And then I got my taxes and fees down here because you're always going to pay taxes and fees. It's another 13, 14 bucks in this case. When you scroll down and look at the breakdown of the bill, when you're doing some stuff for energy calculations, first off, you want more than one month. You want to look at multiple months. That way, if there's an anomaly or whatever, you don't get stumped on the wrong thing. But you also want to make sure the bills you're working with say actual for the meter read. If they're estimated, that's just a guess on what happened in previous years. You want to get actual meter readings if you want to know what's actually going on. Uh, so in this case, it shows you the dates how much KWH you used on each meter reading, and then the difference, 845, is what you're actually going to be paying on. You look at the breakdown of the bill itself. I have my supply and how much I'm paying. So I'm paying 7.8 cents of KWH. Then I have my delivery from ComEd, separate from my actual power. In that case, I'm paying these distribution charges. I'm paying 3 cents plus a few fractional cents, so maybe almost 4 cents total on delivery. So I'm already up to like 12 cents without even adding the taxes and fees in. And of course, when you add the taxes and fees in, it's even more. If you want, you could take the whole bill, $127, and divide it by the KWH uh, to see how much you're paying total. Um, I actually, uh, I track that because I'm kind of dorky. Kind of dorky, I'm, you know, really dorky. Um, so I'll show you what that looks like. I track it over time and I average it all out on a spreadsheet, once again, dorky. So if I have, uh, where's electric, $127, 845 kWh, I paid 15.1 cents last month uh, for my total utility costs. Last year as a whole, I paid 14.7. So I tend to look at stuff that way and I base my energy calculations and savings payback on that because if I based it on the seven cents versus the real 14 or 15 cents I'm paying, it's a pretty big difference, right? So that's your electric bill, residentially. Um, 
We can look at a commercial electric bill as well. Um, we'll look at a summer one um, and a winter one. Actually, you know what? Let's look at the residential gas first. So the residential gas bill works similar. Mine's only 27 bucks because it's summertime right now. So not a lot of gas usage. I'm basically using my dryer and my, and my stove uh, and my water heater. So it's pretty minimal. Uh, it's a little bit more when I get into the winter time. Um, as you can see for winter time, gas usage, usually around 100 bucks, 80 bucks, something like that. So your gas bill works the same way. You have breakdowns on here, normal stuff, account, how much you owe, um, a graph showing you each month over time so you can see how much you're spending. Now, some people also have estimated utility, I should say estimated, they have uh, balanced out utility bills where they pay the utility the same exact dollar amount every month, budgeted utility bills. And those ones you have to look not at the dollars at all. Look at the KWH and look at the therms because uh, the dollars are gonna be the same every single month no matter what. So this graph shows you kind of over time how much you've been spending each month. And obviously winter months for gas heating in the Midwest, it's obviously more. Uh, you can see here uh, how much you're paying per therm. In this case, it's only showing that I'm paying eight cents a therm for my delivery. I have a separate cost on how much you pay for the actual gas, 24 cents a therm. So if somebody says, I only pay 24 cents a therm for gas, okay. You also have to pay to have it delivered. You also have to pay the taxes and fees. And once again, what I do is I take my whole bill and I divide it out by how many therms I used in total. And you can see I didn't actually spend, where's it at? I didn't actually spend 24 cents a therm. I actually spent a $1.26 a therm when all was said and done. Now that was a skewed month because the in the summertime, the account fees are a bigger portion than the actual usage. But if you look at the whole year last year, I paid 67 cents a therm. The year before that, 72. So when I do energy calcs, I usually use 70 cents a therm in this area instead of the 24 cents or 30 cents that people think they're paying, uh, just to give it a more representative uh, factor. So that's the way your gas bill would work, same as your electric bill. Commercially, a little bit different discussion we have to have. Uh, this one's actually one up in Wisconsin that I just happen to have on my computer. This is a summertime example on here. Uh, they have gas and electric from the same provider. We're gonna look at the top part where it's the electric part on here. And if you take a look at the actual bill, once again, there's a separate charge for distribution related stuff versus actual energy consumption. That's normal, like we said, most utilities do do that. But then commercially, you're also paying for the KWH, the total energy you're using, and the KW, the highest peak power demand that you're using. And in some buildings, that peak demand becomes way more important than the energy usage. So as you turn things on, especially inductive loads like compressors and rooftop fans and chillers and things like that, those things get a big inrush spike on the current and then kind of settle off a little bit. And if I get a lot of big spikes of inrush current at the exact same moment in time, I'm gonna get a pretty big demand charge. The utility charges the demand charge because that determines how big the grid needs to be, how big the line sizes need to be in your neighborhood, how big the lines gotta be from the, from the transformer to your building, Right, all that stuff is dictated by that peak demand versus the actual energy usage is determined by the power plant and how much you're using of it. So that's why they have those two charges. They want you to keep the KW demand low because if you're a big user and you're always spiking, you make them have to make infrastructure upgrades to the physical wiring of the, of the, of the community. And that's expensive. So by penalizing you or, by, or charging you for what you use, they're able to keep their cost down, incentivize you to keep it lower. There's lots of things we can do, which we can talk about in other videos to keep your demand charges down. Uh, but this just kind of explains how they actually work. So in regards to demand charges, I typically have multiple ones, right? So uh, I have this distribution demand charge, which is not the one that's circled. 99.2 KW per day at 8.4 cents is what they're paying, 252 bucks that month. And then I have this uh, demand charge on my distribution or on my electricity actual usage. 95.7 kW per day, and that's another 1200 bucks. So of this person's $4,500 bill, 1500 of it is going towards demand charges. The rest of it's going towards actual energy usage. So those demand peaks uh, do add up and they can be impactful because they're gonna last the whole entire year. If I look at a, uh, there's my other demand charge right there, right? So that's my one on the distribution side of the equation. But if I look at a winter bill, you can see that 99.2 on the distribution charge shows up on summer and winter, the exact same 99.2, because that stays on there the whole year. It's the highest peak you had in any 15 minute moment 
for the whole entire past 12 months. So you do one mistake and you put a bunch of crap on at the same time and pay for it for a whole year, over and over every single month. It really adds up pretty substantially. Whereas if you look at the difference between the summer bill and winter bill on the uh, electricity side, 95.7 versus 65.6. .6. So that's the highest peak I had for that month essentially. So one of them is penalizing me for the whole year, one of them is penalizing me for just that particular month. Either way, I wanna keep those things lower. Um, the other thing you'll notice on these bills is that you have different rates in some cases for different times of day. And that can happen residentially too, although that's le less common than it is commercially. But in this case, for these consumers, 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. was one rate, and then 1 to 6 p.m. was a much higher rate, and then 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. it dropped back down. So that 1 to 6 p.m. is the highest rate because that's when they have to generate the most power because that's when everybody's peak air conditioning loads are happening, right? You had sun going on all day, it gets through the insulation of your building, and at some point in the afternoon, two, three, four, five o'clock is when you need the most air conditioning. That's why they have the most charge then. They want you to stop using power in the afternoon. They wanna incentivize you to do that because every people, everyone that wants to use power in the afternoon causes them to turn on another power plant. And guess what they don't do normally? They don't run the inefficient power plant all day long. They run their best power plants that make them the most money, that are the most efficient. And then when there's a really peak demand, they bring on an old dog and that guy doesn't make them any money. So they don't want you to do that. So they want to incentivize you to stop running stuff in the afternoon if you can. So you kind of understand these things. You can kind of, I don't want to say game your bill, but you can kind of play by the rules and save a lot of money. Commercially keeping your demand charges down, try to get some of your big loads handled at night or in the morning when you can. Like things like charging a forklift. Don't do that in the middle of the day, dude. Do it at night when the rates are lower. Right? Same thing at your house. If you can keep these things in check, uh, you can save quite a bit of money. So hopefully that helps you understand how these bills actually work. Uh, if you have any questions and you happen to be here at a TEC customer, let me know and we'll help explain it to you a little bit better. Thank you for your time.